Hey everybody, welcome to Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show, the only official uh, podcast of Monkey Barrel Comedy Club, one of the world's most famous comedy clubs, and we're coming to you right from uh, the heart of Edinburgh, where the club is. Every week we have uh, wonderful comedians visiting the club, and uh, we interview them, get to know them, and this week it's our wonderful guest, Paddy Young. Hello, thanks so much for having me. Then, oh, that was lower energy than <laughs> I gave in, but I liked it. You were like... Well, I was trying to keep the energy low because we, there was some shouting outside. There was some shouting outside. I didn't want to match it, you know what I mean? Our podcast was momentarily interrupted by a tour guide outside, and some of the facts were wild. Oh, she was oh. livid. Livid, but very interested. So, uh, Paddy, what, what, how would you describe your comedy to people who, who've not caught you online before, oh, caught your, that, your live shows? That's so hard, That's it? an incredibly hard question right at the start. Because you either sound pathetic or you sound like you're bragging. Yeah. So shall I try and toe the line between the two? 90% of the people that come on here just describe themselves as a silly goose and we move on. Oh, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> you like that? You yeah, silly yeah it's goose? real silly goose time. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. So uh, you've done lots of things, you, like you've performed all over the country, you've appeared on TV, uh, you were also, you made it to the final of the BBC New Comedy Awards. Which year was, was that? That was this year. Was that this year? Year. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. If it was any do, other year, do not apologize. But now I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not up on the on the new blood. <laughs> hey. uh, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, uh, when was when was your first kind of Edinburgh Fringe? Well, this is the weird thing about Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. The year just gone was my debut. It was your debut, which is the first hour. Yeah, but I first came up in um, 2018. Mm -hmm. Me and Dan Tiernan did a split bill show. Yeah, called Hunks. It was on at, I think, 1 p.m. I love that you were worried at the start. Like, I don't want to be a boasting guy. <laughs> I show hunks. Hot guys. Well, if you... Yeah, it was anything but that. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 p.m. at the the world-famous Barbados. Oh. You been there? I've been to Barbados. Didn't There was one year, it might have been 2018, yeah. where they filled the entire venue with sand. So n my year was the year when there wasn't power for some of the days but i think the year after there was a sewage problem yeah i remember that i remember that that's part of edinburgh is that you kind of just throw yourself at it and think yeah. ah, how bad can it be and edinburgh's like oh i'll show you yeah. <laughs> i'll show you venues things will go wrong yeah shows will overrun i remember one of the first years i, I came over to edinburgh uh to do the the, the fringe run it was at a venue called oh, finnegan's wake Mm. And I didn't realize, but Finnegan's Wake in Edinburgh is the bar where everyone ends up after all the other bars close. Oh. So when you're flying in the show, you'd be like, oh, I'm in this place called Finnegan's Wake. And people are like, oh, don't mention that to me, please. Like it brought back flashbacks and memories. So what time was your show? Ours was 5 p.m., I believe. Yeah. But uh, when we got there, the guy running the venue said, oh, just so you know, Saturdays and Sundays, we put on sport in that room. <laughs> and... Uh, that's that's just what we always do and we're like can you so, not so did you also that? do your show as well well we're doing it was me it was a split bill with me and another person and mm -hmm. we were doing our show there and they were just like we, we, you can't do the show on saturdays and sundays mm -hmm. and we're like they're kind of the biggest they're days the for making money that's the, the where the crowds are the nicest and when everything's the most fun um so the first weekend we didn't do it and then he was like ah, no one came in i guess you can <laughs> That's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Did you even have like flyers and stuff? We had flyers. We had everything. People, well, he said he let us do it because so many people queued up for our show. Mm. And he was like, oh, it's just football. <laughs> they had to go, okay, we'll, we'll put the show back on. Huh. But there, there is something about that when you when you do your first fringe runs or your first uh, few of them mm. where it's just, it's kind of torturous a little bit. You put yourself really through, through hell. It's amazing how many of us make it through. Mm-hmm. Because it feels like it's forever. Yeah. I my my feeling of Edinburgh. I mean, even before then, I remember I go. I went up as a punter a few times, and then when I just, I think I'd literally just done a handful of gigs, a couple mm -hmm. of gigs, I went up, and in my mind I was good. I didn't have a place. This is not like me at all. Okay. But I didn't have a place to stay. Edinburgh does that to people. People will just be like, I'll get in a plane and I'll go yeah. there. And they, yeah. it's like eat, pray, love. They're like, I'll just do a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just go there and my life will just evolve in front of me. Yeah, this was my eat, pray, love. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I went up there and um, I had two gigs booked, mm -hmm. like two spots. Yeah. You know, because there's always maniacs that book. Oh, there's always shows running. There's always there's shows just, running. And, there's always people in the street going, can you, can you, can you get on stage and do 10 minutes? Exactly. Yeah. And there's, there's, you know, you can, you can kid them. And I, on the, I got there and one of the gigs got pulled. Oh. And I just had one gig. Oh. And then I did one, I, so I did one thing and 
I remember I was on with Mark Jennings. We didn't know each other then. Yeah. We didn't really speak to each other, but it was a horrible gig. I think I did about three minutes and then she lit, gave me the light off. And then I had nowhere to go. And so I went to a sandwich shop and I went to a sandwich shop and I had a sandwich and then it was closing. Oh, and I Christ. think they must have picked it up in me. Something was up. Yeah. So she said, we're going to throw away the sandwiches. <laughs> Do you want the sandwiches? <laughs> I so hard for a moment you were going to say, and they were just like, do you want to do like 10 to 15 minutes yeah. of material yeah. in the shop to the sandwiches? They were sandwiches? like, welcome to the Gilded Balloon Sandwich Shop. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this looks ripe for comedy. Yeah. No, they gave me a plastic bag full of sandwiches. That's nice. It's but also, nice, but it's... also I'd gone up there to fulfill my dreams and yeah. I realised I was homeless with a bag full of sandwiches. Yeah. So yeah, that was my eat, pray, love. I feel, I feel like everyone has that. Everyone has that moment. Yeah. I had a similar thing where it was a, a shop called Mr. Pie and they were like... No one else is coming in for these pies. Do you guys want them? Was that here? It was in Edinburgh. I'm wow. like, okay. And they just gave us, apparently this is how these restaurants get rid of excess food. They just look for depressed comedians and go, hey, here's a, here's a I guess food. they think, I guess it's like karma for them because because of depressed really? comedians, they get to charge twice the amount of price for a pie. That's true. You know, for a whole month. So when they see one of the, you know, it's kind of like being in a, um, like a pension scheme or something, yeah. you know, and you go and stuff to go, you club together. It's like yeah. as a whole, they win. So when they see what, even though they've made a loss on you that day, yeah. your aura is what lifts them up. <laughs> you, go, you go back down south and tell people, yeah, it was great. I got some yeah. pies yeah. and then they all go back and then, up. And then, yeah, and then 1400 hipsters come up and pay 12 pounds for a, a pie that I think they just got from Greg's um, bin. Oh my God. And, uh, and they're just like, back in their shops going the beast must be fed <laughs> <laughs> the beast of consumerism oh my goodness yeah. well something that we've got on our on our show here to mm. relax people is we pull something randomly from your social medias oh that's uh, awesome <laughs> so we're gonna bring something up and we're gonna talk about By the way it. this looks like a real is this a gaming laptop this is well i think it is yeah because it's a, it's used it for editing so i was like it, what has a graphics card that i can edit on it's really nice. Oh, thank it's you. It's like chunky. It looks it, serious. It's very old. Dare I say, it's very male. <laughs> oh, really? Do you know oh, what I mean? I don't, I don't like Do, that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I don't like that. <laughs> like, look at look at look how efficient oh, no. small the space bar is. It's I, like, I, you don't, I, I you don't have time you, between words. This po this laptop is not full of Joe Rogan podcasts. I haven't <laughs> downloaded them just in case the internet goes down. <laughs> I like I like that idea of a, a very macho. Oh yeah, no, he's taking this out in his Starbucks, <clears throat> and everyone's like, "Whoa, back off!" <laughs> Excuse me, Mister. Please Pie. take any pies you want. <laughs> yeah, say, Mister Pie, you might remember ten years ago you gave me pies. Look what I've turned it into. All right, life's gone great for me. So, so uh, anyway, you've been creeping on me. I've been creeping on you, yeah. and we've got a wonderful thing to show you here. Mm -hmm. It is on live now. Uh, wow. I mean, for the people that are listening on Spotify who don't have the video, I would say uh, watch it on YouTube. It's great. <laughs> but also to describe this to you, it's a tweet and it is an image, uh, a, a crudely drawn sketch of a man in a tie. Mm. Uh, what is this? I can't believe you've... Th this is, must be from so long ago. First of all, I don't really use Twitter. I use Instagram, but I'm so, I, I, I find a Twitter so depressing. This must be from... 2015. 2015. 2015! Wow. This Which is, is probably the year that I got Twitter and tried to, and tried to put th funny pictures up three times in a row. And when it didn't build a career, <laughs> I gave up. Um, but it says uh, Oflin MP, I'm EP. So this, and I can see what he's about. I think he's a UKIP guy. Okay. Can you Google what he, he looks is, like? Because yeah. I don't actually know what he looks like. I don't know how accurate it is. Oh, this is. But I think be great. I must have seen him. My guess is because I don't know who that is. But I'm, I must have seen a picture of him and then. <laughs> so far back in someone's timeline like i don't know what this actually this is, is. creepy this is this is upsetting you, you want you you, you load me in with promise of free pies and silly goose all of a sudden i'm having to defend a, a drawing i did i'm like on trial now <laughs> this is intense oh that's, that's, pretty good. Like that's pretty good hey listen if you're listening to the audio go watch the video because it's up on screen right now and yeah that's that's pretty damn good that's not bad at all let's have them side by side the, I'm I'm now going to start yeah. accusing you of tracing because that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which was the photo? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's lovely. So I saw you on the telly and I felt inspired to do a picture. Feel yeah. free to use it for posters or badges. That was you giving back the same way the the sandwich person gave back to you. I was doing my bit. Like, yeah, you're putting stuff out into the. You ether. know, say what you want about you, Kit, but it's a net good. <laughs> <laughs> So was that was that something you did for a while? Where you would draw pictures of people? I do I do drawings, yeah, yeah. And I it's funny I I'm always doodling and I've always got a notebook that I do the stuff in. Mm -hmm. And um, 
like my good friend Ed Knight, he got a tattoo of one of them recently, and that oh, was really, really cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I've always thought about doing like more with them, but what I kind of like about it is, uh, you know, it's very easy, especially if you're a freelancer like like mm-hmm. we are. It's very easy to get a hobby and then immediately try and the moment you monetize it, yes. it stops being fun. Mm-hmm. And I thought about like making stickers, and I've I've done I've made things with them before, but and I drew. In fact, me and Dan did a show once called Sadax, and I drew. See if you can find it. Um, it was <coughs> Paddy Young and Dan Tierney and Sadax. I drew the poster for that, and I thought it was genius. And, oh, um, we'll take uh, it. And time. people didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> we called the show Sadax, well, right? I and we we thought that it was. I thought it was clever because yeah. it was like their acts, mm-hmm. the comedians, and like Sadax. But we were flyer and Americans, and they were like, "Oh, we, we kind of want to see something funny tonight." <laughs> so it like, yeah, it's going to be funny. Is as an image turned up. Really? You see, that's how successful it was. Wow. You can't even find it. Yeah, it's it's all of our, our faces all drawn. But We're like in a sea, a sea of freaky looking people. Isn't that the way it always is, though, is that you, you do something, you're like, oh, this is great. This is going to this is gonna blow up so big online. Yeah. Like, people are going to get it, and that's never the thing. And then you'll do something silly, and you'll be like, why, why is, that? Why is yeah. that blown up? Well, I also think that when you're really successful or if you're very well known, or if you have an audience, mm. you can call things something abstract and people yeah. will get it. But if you're just trying to rear your head above the surface of a million other things. 100%. Which is why, like, I remember you go up there and then you see guys and they I remember, it'd be called something like Three Aussies Comedy. Oh, yeah. You know, Irish stand-up. And yeah. you'd be like, oh, of course that's going to sell. Of course. You, yeah. Whereas we, we were like, there we go, that's it. That's it. We got it. Oh, so that's there, great. That's great. That's... And I think I actually drew Dan quite well, but I, could, I didn't draw myself quite well. But if you want, you want to know a little trade secret here? Yeah. You see, you see the, the letters are in the heads. So for the, for the listeners, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven letters uh, in Sad Axe, mm-hmm. and each letter is in a different cartoon head. Now, I drew that because the show was initially called Cretins. Oh. I thought that was a really funny name for a show. And then uh, about a fortnight before The Fringe, my dad said, you know, cretinism is... That was a Victorian word for like a disability. A, like a medical thing. For yeah, medical, I, say. I think it was like an iron, some sort of deficiency. Yeah, yeah. And I'd written cretins on a bunch of misshapen heads. And he was like, Ugh. And so I had to call the fringe and say, look, and then they, I couldn't change the whole post, I didn't have time, so I had to think of a title that was the same amount of letters as cretins. You wow. know, that's real creative stuff. Yeah. For a, show that, for a show that got an average of, I want to say, <laughs> well, probably less heads than you can see in the poster. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Dan were there every time. But. Well done, though. Like, the, the struggle there of having to sit down and go, okay, it has to be this amount of letters. Yeah. And it has to somehow theme with this show. You know, they say the strongest weeds grow in, what is it? Something, tough pavements or something? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's that, actually. Like that. Do you want to get, get up here? <laughs> a printed... <laughs> Live, laugh, sad axe. Get that written on the wall. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So another thing we also do is we get questions from Instagram. So uh, here's our first question for you, which was, what was the last job interview you remember having and how did it go? Hmm. Good question. Well, actually, uh, I did, um, until very recently, I was doing tour guiding. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that you outside? Though, of- <laughs> no, and I'll tell you what I heard. Amateur. <laughs> she will not be getting tipped at the end of you screaming like that. Um, I was doing tour guiding here, food tours in oh. in um, in in London. And so you bring people to like different, right? yeah. like, like a pub crawl, but for food. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you take that, and the the idea was it was like British food, and so you'd have fish and chips and oh. and, and, and and sausage rolls, and uh, I think the interview for that. I mean, that was just a really easy interview because it was quite, um, you know, quite chilled. And it's just talking about food and history. Yeah. They're probably like, you've turned up, so the job is now yours. <laughs> well done. Do you know what? You're probably right. At the time, I was like, I can't believe I stole this. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> I remember doing a job interview to work in a, in, a, in a music store back when I lived in Ireland. And I was like, which is such an old sentence, a music shop? What? Why would yeah. someone buy music? But I, I remember being there and they, they were like... <laughs> He was there, like, to catch people out. They would say, okay, let's do a role play. I come into a shop and uh, I really? want to buy... that's awesome. I want to buy some uh, music, but it's a band you don't like. What do you do? Wow. And I was like, uh, I would just sell to them anyway. And the person was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously other people have just been like, I throw it in their face. I'm like, Bleh, bewitched, Bleh, hate that band. <laughs> It was, I'm sorry, the band was Lost Profits. <laughs> we don't employ nonces here. 
Are they still going? Lost profits? Mm, I think they're, I think they're, I think they're uh, in a bit of an ebb at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully their reunion tour never happens. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was weird. They were just like, yeah, oh, cool, perfect. There you go. Yeah. I think I remember. How old were you? Oh, it was probably like. 18, mm-hmm. 18 or 19. Yeah. But I remember trying to say the phrase like, uh, oh, if it's, uh, you know, I'm, in my head I was like, it's fine if someone else's favorite band is not my cup of tea. Or I thought, uh, or it's not, it's not my kettle of tea or something. Mm-hmm. And, or it's not my, I don't know what I was you trying said to say. You said it wrong. But I said it wrong. Yeah. And I, what I said to them was like, oh, it's fine if that's not my kettle of fish. <laughs> and they were just like, okay, I still got the job. They were still like, cool. <laughs> You didn't punch me in the face and scream lost profits forever. Yeah. So we're fine with and that. And the guy's clearly an idiot, so we don't need to pay him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. So so our next question is, who was the first person you remember hating or being really angry at? Wow. Guys, these are, these so are intense. Deep. Yeah, very we've deep. We've gone from questions. cartoons to hatred. <laughs> um, first person I remember hating. Mm. It's an intense question because you, you have to think back to being a kid and... Who you might have hated. Yeah, who would that be? It could have been the Tooth Fairy. I, re- I remember... Um, I remember there was a girl in the village who we didn't like. And I remember me and my sister used to say, she looked like a rich tea biscuit. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that because I've not... I can't... I've just... Me and my sister haven't even spoken about this. This must be 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. She was a real... Uh, by the way, I was four years old. Yes. <laughs> but we, I want to, she, we don't want this to... You do know that rich tea biscuit is a medical term from the Victorian times. You do know that, right? <laughs> we have to change this podcast and we need to, the exact amount of letters in the title to a new one. We need it. So she was an affluent tea. She, um, she, she was just... Yeah, she wasn't... I remember just she wasn't nice and I think she was a bit of a grass as well. Oh, right. Yeah. And I remember we said she looked like a rich tea and I, think, and I remember thinking, more than funny, I thought, that's genius. Yeah. Yeah, it's so that's a good insult. In yeah. That's a pretty good one. I can't as well. even remember this girl's name. I, I know, but you, you remember the emotions. Yeah. Right? That's what's so funny yeah, is yeah, that true. like you'll you'll hate people as kids, especially someone being a grass or being a rat. Yeah. When you're a kid, you're like, why are you making this more difficult? Absolutely. Absolutely. And ironically, the teachers would repay them in rich tea biscuits. Wow, that's wild. And we've got her here right now. Come on in. <laughs> She's now a tall guide working in Edinburgh. <laughs> she she now resembles a bourbon biscuit. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what is, uh, third and final question is, what is the weirdest or most niche YouTube channel or topic that you watch regularly? I feel like everyone's got one of these. Wow. Well, while, while you think, I'll tell you. you go. I recently started watching a guy who uh, unplugs drains that have overflowed. That's, so he does, I, love, I love that. He just drives around the city and then he'll like be like, oh, gee whiz, look at this. It's all overflowing water. And then he goes over and he just pokes it. And I think just, I've seen this. It all just drains out and it's so good. There's another person I watch. And he, who he doesn't get paid, does it? He just doesn't does get paid. Love. Yeah. There, there, there's a number of people. So there's one YouTuber who discovered that uh, like cutting the grass outside people's houses yeah. for free. People love watching it. And he became very popular. And now there's like 30 of them doing it. But what's wild is uh, people get very aggressive about it. People will come out and be like, why are you cutting that lawn? And they'll be like, oh, oh, I'm doing it for free. It's for my YouTube channel. Well, why don't you do mine as well? Like, it's very intense. And one person called the police on them. They were like, you're not allowed to do this. This is this is uh, vandalism, someone said. And he's like, just cutting the grass, like revealing that there's like actually a path under there. Because it's been, most of these houses are abandoned uh, in America and, and, and are, you know, haven't had someone living in them for 10 or 15 years. So where there used to be a path, where there used to be a driveway, it's all overgrown. So you get to the end of the video and you're like, it looks like a house again. Imagine this person trying to explain his job to his grandparents <laughs> from 100 years ago oh you cut grass no but it's actually quite a good job what how much do they pay you no they don't pay you anything but now and again you put out a squarespace ad and yeah i get sponsorship from companies that make clippers that's i can't work out if it's really good i feel like that's a good you know so many things are bad that's mm. probably quite good i think so yeah no, no one's getting hurt there are they no. no no but people the aggression that comes out of people still when they're like why are you filming what is this what's going on yeah is that kind of becomes the meta textual thing that people look for. So now the videos are all labeled like, she called the police on me because I cut down a tree. Well, I don't like that. I don't like that. But wait, wait, wait. 
if he's knocking on someone's, he's not just cutting <clears> it without <throat> asking their permission. So a lot of these houses are abandoned. So, so so people will say, hey, there's this house in our street and the no one's lived there. Maybe there's an older person in there, like in a care home now. I don't like that. The house is empty. I don't like that. Would you make the street look better? Because it's da- <clears throat> it's ruining the view of the whole street. Mm. So if he can find someone to get permission from, they usually do. But a lot of the time they're just like, I'll just cut it. I'm going to put my conspiracy brain on here. Okay. <laughs> this man knows, right? <laughs> he knows that people are going to be confrontational, right? Yeah. And he probably has seen from his first video where it went confrontational, oh, they got views. Definitely. So it's not like he's doing this thing and then it happens. If he's doing it more than once, yeah. he's not, this is the whole, th- this is the whole thing with altruism on the internet, mm-hmm. right? I guess the most base version of that is when you see someone filming themselves, give money to a homeless person. Yes. You always, there's always an element of no matter how good it is. It's why I find Mr. Beast a very uncomfortable experience. Yeah, because no, I understand that. He'll always do things that are sort of ostensibly charitable. And because his audience is very young, I always, you always see the comments are always like, he's just such an amazing guy mm. and he does so much good for the world. And it's funny that they can't see that it's all self-serving. Yeah. So I think with this garden guy, he might be a nice guy, but he's looking after number one. That's well, we've and he's got, got a hero him. complex. We've got him on a Zoom call right now. Bring him <laughs> in. <laughs> well, I, luckily, I, li- I live in a flat share in London, so <laughs> well, I know. I know what you mean, though, by like watching people like Mr. Beast, where you're like, "How do people not realize?" There's, there's been people who've been given huge amounts of uh, like like uh, money or or cars. People have been given like Maseratis, and he's like, "There you go. There's your car." And then the person goes to get insurance, and the insurance is so astronomically high that yeah. they can't actually use that car. So then they need to sell it. Yeah. And even then they have to get less money because it's been used before. And it's yeah. like, sometimes people have been like, Mr. Beast almost bankrupted me <laughs> by giving me what he thought was helpful things. Well, but- I used to love on Pimp My Ride when some guy would have like a broken down Corsa. <laughs> and then at the end, they'd be like, well, you still got a broken down Corsa, but look, we put a fucking fish tank in the boot. <laughs> and you're like, oh, awesome. So now it's flooded. First yeah. time I take a corner. We heard you like skateboarding. Oh yeah, what, what have you got? A, a thing at the back that I can um, carry skateboards on? No, no, no. We've turned the a speaker system that looks like a half pipe. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys six years old? <laughs> we, we heard that you like books, so we turned your car into a mobile library. It's, like, it's absolutely awesome. And the car, get me a new car. Yeah, that should be Pimp My Ride, is that they just go, well, that old car was terrible, so we just so bought you a new yeah. one, and there I mean, I go. guess it wouldn't be very good telly. I mean, it would be a better thing if at the end of Pimp My Ride, they said, you can have the car that we've made that is ridiculous, that is your old car, or you can have this brand new car. And yeah. then there's an impetus on them. I don't know why I'm workshopping or, Pimp My Ride. We'll, show that we'll, we'll, we'll give you years. whatever car you want, but you have to become a pimp. Oh. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> you can keep that, Tim Westwood. I think he's an old. Well, not, well he's, done, he's done something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's been, he's in trouble. This is a, welcome to Wrongans, the podcast, where we talk about Wrongans. There's a lot of them out there. Oh, um, I didn't say what, what's my algorithm. So what, what is, what is the, your most niche YouTube channel that you do, watch? Do you know regularly? what? I've, del- I've deleted TikTok months ago because it was just too addictive. <coughs> but I did discover that my algorithm on TikTok is um, people in developing countries um, hurting themselves. Oh, like uh, you know, you don't, you're not quite sure where it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a vaguely foreign land. Okay. And p- people on, you know, I love videos of like when someone's on a moped and they've got like a lot animals on the moped with them. Yeah. Do you know, do you know the ones I, I mean? know the ones. You mean, or like yeah. kids like playing naughty kids in tracksuits, like playing on a swing set, but you can see it's like sort of post-Soviet. It's like also blocks. Each yeah. side is coming up as they swing on us. Yeah. yeah. Or, or or like um. I used to watch this TikTok live of this family that were like in a hut. It looked like a mud hut. And they were like, just like begging the camera for like, please give us this. You know, the, you can ask for like yeah. stickers and stuff to get money. Yeah. So they were like begging for money. I, I found that fascinating. But that's the thing. You you would watch that going, this is so, what is this video? You're clicking it out of just a curiosity of like, yeah. what is this? And the algorithm goes, oh, you love that. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 I don't. I just clicked on it because I don't know what that is. Like I clicked in a video and it was like, uh, it was like woman jumps into off of, off of like a boat into the water and then there's a great white shark. And I was like, oh my God, watch the clip. And then every, every YouTube short was like, shark attacks a child. I'm like, yeah. that's not what I want to watch. I don't want to see that. Is. I mean, I watched it. Yeah. yeah. That was also, um, that child was fine. That child was, oh, was okay. It? Oh, well. It was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we've, we've discovered uh, what you like. <laughs> Uh, we also have a little thing that we do where we have our previous guest, our previous comedian, uh, leave questions for you. So mm-hmm. uh, last week we had Alexandra Haddo. Let's go. And we have, okay. <laughs> we have three questions from Alexandra. Mm-hmm. Let's check out the video. Paddy, hi. Um, Alex Haddo here, your friend and fellow comedian. 
Uh, I have three questions for you uh, for your Monkey Barrel podcast. Number one, very important. What would you name your firstborn son? Think carefully. Number two, how do you think nepotism has affected your comedy career? Wow. And number three, what would your death row meal be? Three courses and a drink. That's great. Great wow. questions. Can we also uh, just, can you, can you play that just again for a second? And then just, uh, just pause. Is that you in the background? <laughs> There's Ewan in the background, everybody. <laughs> Ewan's in the background setting up the cameras and everything for wow, the podcast. A little Easter egg there for the we fans go. There. <laughs> a little Easter egg. Yeah. That's what you're people welcome. want. Guess what? <laughs> the algorithm's seen that now. All you're getting is Ewan content from now on, everybody. Oh, he's sitting on a shark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we have three questions there. Question number one was, what would you name your firstborn son? Hmm. I think uh, I've got a bit of science, a, like a science theory. I think the the name of your child affects how they look. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can see that. Do you know what that. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like when I think more often than not, people do look like their names. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, you look like a George. Yeah, I and mean, I, I got that name and have grown into it. And I look, I look like a Patrick. Mm-hmm. So I would name my son Titus. Just to see what happens. Like, I think Titus happen? is a very strong name. Mm. But I think loyal as well. Have you ever met a Titus? My mm. cat when I was a child. We had, oh. two, we had two cats. One was called Milk Pudding and one was called Titus. <laughs> so you want your and, child to slowly grow into a cat. Well, listen, Milk Pudding. Nice. Fat boy. Okay. And he, he got a brain tumor and walked into the back and drowned. Okay. Titus. Strong. Dependable. Okay. We used to live on a farm and he got lost. He got lost for like, I want to say like 10 days, two weeks. And he got tra- <coughs> trapped in a, in a barn. My dad doesn't like talking about it. It makes him emotional. He doesn't get emotional about mm. literally anything else. But when we talk about it, he doesn't like it. But yeah, Titus came back and he survived. Yeah. So I think if I called my son Titus, then, then that would do him well. The other thing I've thought about is with names. Uh, you know when you, you join equity? Yeah. Or go on Spotlight? You have to, you, you have to pick a, a name. Specific, unique name. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So my given name was Patrick Young. And there, yeah. there was a Patrick Young years ago. So I chose Paddy Young. But people already called me Paddy anyway. But I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if I made my spotlight name the dentist? <laughs> and people would be like, who's this guy? Have you heard about the dentist? And maybe my headshot would be like with a dentist mask on. And it'd be like, the dentist is, you know, the Phantom of the Opera or whatever. Who's in that movie? The dentist. Exactly. Wouldn't that be awesome? Ooh. But imagine if I call my son the dentist. <laughs> the dentist. The, the dentist. That's, and he doesn't have my surname either. No. But I mean that's that that's perfection. So that that's my that's Imagine my even in school. Howard yeah. Jacob <laughs> the dentist <laughs> here. Um no, that's perfect. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I like that. I like that Good. a lot. That's pretty great. Uh I mean look if if becomes a comedian, your child becomes a comedian, they come up to do the fringe. The show's called The Dentist. Easy. And people are like, Oh, is that the name of the show? No. Produced by Paddy Young. <laughs> I remember uh John Cleese's daughter did a show and it, I think they had a huge tagline which was like produced by John Cleese. Well, that's clever. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay, question number two is, how do you think nepotism has affected your career? Well, my dad is John Bishop, so <laughs> no, he's not. He's Well, actually, I, I've only had one nepotism job in my life. My parents don't do anything to do with comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the only way, I, oh, you need to update the beast something. needs feeding. There we go. My dad works in like sort of like agriculture and, and science, I guess. Yeah. And he got me my first nepotism job a couple of years ago, which was working in a laboratory. Oh. It was like like hourly wage work. You were for a short time the scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The dentist has uh, pivoted. Uh, and that was my first experience, my only experience of a nepotism job. Mm-hmm. It was just funny to have it in an industry yeah. I don't know anything about. And all I was doing was like <laughs> scraping bits of wood and documenting them. Uh, Mixing, get, getting one liquid and pouring it into a beaker. And then no, it, it wasn't as cool oh, they as wouldn't that. would let you do that? Shall I say the one time I did, so I, my, my, I think my parents, and my dad and certainly his side of the family, they, they, they wanted me, they, they love science. I remember mm-hmm. my granny once got me a science set. Really? You know, like all the, you know, when you get all the, you can do like different, all the little different kind yeah. of beakers and, and chemicals. I, I went into and... the shed and I, I put them all on a big thing of wood and I set them on fire and then I got a headache for the, for the rest of the day. And that was my foray into science. 
you know what's really upsetting? I think I did the same thing. <laughs> I remember my friend got a set and we just poured it all yeah. in and just went, well, all these all cool right. things that you could do. One of them, you know, created this, one of them, that. And I just thought, let's burn them all. It was, it was awesome and then painful. And that, that's why I don't have the capability to do anything other than comedy now. Yeah. I mean, that's the, <laughs> that's the nice thing about comedy is just, can't do anything else. Here's this for you. God, yeah. Uh, perfect. Okay. So what would your death row meal be? Mm, I think, I think I'd go for the cake from Matilda. <laughs> They sell that now. Do, Do they, they really? There's a TikTok shop, but someone on TikTok sells the... What's the guy's name? Uh, what is his name? Bruce. Bruce? Is it Bruce? Yeah. They sell I was going to say Augustus Gloop, but he's traveling in the chocolate factory. You can buy yes. the cake. Wow. Yeah. So I'd get that, and then... Just like a... Just like a big needle full of heroin, I guess. Because <laughs> I've never Mine's had it, well. but it would be awesome to have... Wouldn't it mean, like... Or, <coughs> That'd be awesome to be able to do that. Oh yeah, go so on, on you your go. way out. Yeah. Do you think they, they should do that for prisoners and people that are that are on death row? Yeah. Like what would you like? Uh, just a little bit of heroin. Just just oh. to try. Just to say you've tried it, you know. Yeah. And then I'd like them to kill me by dropping a piano on my head. What made you choose between so there was obviously a point where you were thinking piano or anvil? I think uh anvil's solid. It's mm. old school, it's there for a reason. The benefit of piano is if you survive, you wander away with like keys for teeth. <laughs> also, the sound, as you walk away, it makes the sound. Click, 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 click. I want that honky tonk vibe, you know. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's 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 uh, that's a good that's a good choice for for final meal. Great. You, what would you pick if you'd pick one item oh, for a final meal? Final meal. Would it be a McCruncher from? <laughs> what? Well, I'm trying to remember any of those restaurants that do those McCruncher things. McDonald's? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Taco but... Bell, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh. Oh. I don't know. I'm very into Wagamama at the moment. Oh, yeah? Or like, yeah, Wagamama. You think they're going to bring Wagamama like into a prison? Are yeah, you yeah, mad? Oh, well, you never know. <laughs> they <laughs> give you a little paper thing, you can draw on it. And if they're giving heroin, like... they might as well get Wagamama as well. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love that. I'm sat there with the biggest swing you've seen in your life, and they're like, Pad Thai, who does this guy think Okay. Well, hey, listen, that was our episode. We got to find out a lot about you. We got to find out about things that you've done in work and what you like to eat and what you'd eat if you were dying. And I personally, if I was giving you your last meal, I would just present you with a giant garbage bag of sandwiches just to bring it all back <laughs> to the Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs> Uh, but that was our episode for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, do you have any upcoming things you'd like to plug? Any shows or events? Uh, or? I'm on tour right now. Uh, done the Edinburgh date, but mm -hmm. I'm doing Glasgow sometime in March. I think the 22nd of March. Oh, no, I'm probably wrong about that. But in March, have a look. For, oh, if you go on my Instagram, Paddy Instagram, Young, social got, medias. I'm, I'm touring until April. All the info on there. Yeah. Uh, this show comes out every Wednesday with different guests. If you like it, please share it, leave a review, do all the things that help us grow the show. We appreciate it. Uh, if you want to come see live comedy at Monkey Barrel Comedy, we're here in Edinburgh. I host a show every Saturday at 5 p.m. If you'd like to see me... Uh, more frequently, I stream every night on Twitch at www.twitch.tv forward slash Fox Comedy. What are you streaming? Had to remember, never games. Oh. Always nonsense. Always really? a silly goose time. Come check us out there. But that's our episode for this so. week, everybody. Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. There's something hiding under the ice. Imitation of a sound. There's something standing behind the door. Would you like?